Today marks the start of an exciting future, one that will full unfold over the next four years. This new cabinet is ready and willing to roll up its sleeves to take clear and decisive action to achieve our promises and commitments to Albertans. Welcome to a special episode of the Cross Border Interviews, where we will be delving deep into the world of politics and governance, bringing you the latest insights on the 2023 Alberta Cabinet Swearing-In Ceremony. The provincial cabinet has been shrunk by two positions to 25 members, showcasing what the premier says as a blend of seasoned veterans and fresh faces who reflect the diverse fabric of the province. Joining us for a one-on-one -on -one interview is Cara Westerland, the Vice President of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta. Now, the Cabinet shuffle has brought about significant changes, one of which is the transition of Rebecca Schultz from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs to her new role as Minister of Environment. And returning to the position of Minister of Municipal Affairs, well, Rick McIver, who previously held the important role under Jason Kenney's government. He was ultimately shuffled out when Premier Smith was sworn in. His experience and understanding of municipal affairs makes him a familiar face in this realm. Vice President Westerland will delve into her perspectives on this newly formed cabinet. We will explore their expectations and hopes and as well concerns as they look to collaborate with the provincial government on matters of rural municipal governance. Her unique insights will shed light on the dynamics between municipalities and the Alberta cabinet. Let's go. So, Kara, I want to start with the big overarching question. Uh, Premier Smith just recently announced her uh, new cabinet as of today, like literally this morning. What is RMA's initial response to this new cabinet? Well, initially, we are excited to get to work. We're excited to see some familiar faces on the docket. Um, I know there's a few new uh, that are coming in. Um, so we're excited to get to know them and to start working with them. So yeah, I think we're just we're overall we're excited. Um, I know we have a familiar face in municipal affairs that's coming back. So uh, MLA Rick McIver is someone that is very well known in the municipal world. So so you talk about the familiar faces, you're right, there's a lot of familiar faces from the last cabinet prior to the election, but they're in new portfolios. A lot of them are back and a lot of them have been shuffled into different portfolios. Is this going to make RMA's job a little bit harder to catch the ministers up on what's been going on behind the scenes with this new cabinet? Or do you think that since they are familiar with the, what was going on prior, they're just in a new position? So now they're just going to have to get to know what's happening in their new file when it comes to RMA. Yeah, we're not at all concerned um, that the docket from before was a was strong, definitely uh, with their backgrounds. So we were looking really for, uh, forward to working with them. No concerns. Um, she picked a good cabinet. Um, they will be brought up to speed very quickly. I know that um, from experience, and uh, and I'm not at all concerned. I, we're really sad to see Minister Schultz uh, move on. Obviously, um, she was fan absolutely fantastic in the municipal affairs portfolio. So if there's anything that I can say we're a little bit disappointed about is not having her come back. Um, but I'm glad to see that she's where she's at. She's going to do excellent. And the new the new MLAs um, and the new ministers, we're going to warn you, we're going to come 100% uh, in your corner. We have a ton of information we're going to throw at you. Um, and we're really looking forward to building those relationships with the new ministers. And so what's, uh, what's and priority I, number one? Sorry, what's priority number one? Because you want to build those relationships, but there's 25 new 25 ministries that you're going to have to try to catch up and get everyone up to speed. What's going to be priority number one for RMA? Because I know you released your uniquely rural campaign platform during the election. Is that just going to hopefully spill over to this new cabinet? Or is there a priority for you as RMA to get one cabinet minister in a room first off and sit down and have that conversation about? 
Well, I'm glad you brought up the uniquely a rural package because anybody that's listing that's a public document, so you can grab that from our website and 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 have a read of that. Um, we're actually we're literally going to be singing from that song sheet moving forward. Um, some of the the highlights for us, obviously, nothing new probably for you, Chris, is healthcare, uh, EMS response time, uh, the shortage of doctors and nurses in rural communities. Uh, rural broadband is huge. Um, my, my I myself am I'm the deputy reeve from Brazoo County when I don't have my vice president RMA hat on. Um, so disaster and disaster recovery is front and center for a lot of rural municipalities right now. And I, and I know it's a, a key issue for, for here at home with me too as well. So um, many don't know the fire in Brazoo County um, started in the white zone. So what we call private land. Um, if this fire had started quote unquote in the green zone on crown land where most of the rural fires started, um, the province picks up the bills. Um, right now, my municipality is looking at a $7.6 million climbing about $40,000 a day bill. Um, I know there's some programming announced out there, but it's not 100% funding. So we're going to be um, coming hard and fast on the rural side uh, for that disaster money too as well. So, Do you think rural Alberta has a voice at this cabinet table with this new cabinet? Absolutely. Um, there is a lot of returning ministers coming back and re returning MLAs who are very well aware of the issues um, facing rural Albertans. Um, and I'm sure the new ones are going to be brought up to speed quite quickly. And uh, like I mentioned previously, uh, Minister of MacIver that's in the municipal affairs portfolio is no stranger to to the municipal world. And I know he was a city councillor, um, but he's no he is uh, no stranger to the issues that are facing rural Albertans too, as well. One of the big uh, areas that rural Alberta f deals with is agriculture. You have a new agriculture minister under RJ Sergison. Um, have you had uh, conversations with him prior to him being appointed to cabinet? Did you know who he was prior to this? Or are you looking forward to sitting down with him? Because I know uh, in Brazo County, there is a large farming community as well that is so heavily reliant in your community. Absolutely. Um, so I haven't worked directly with uh, RJ personally. However, I know he was working quite closely in the health portfolio, um, especially on the EMS file. Um, I believe he was the lead on that one. I have actually met him a few times. So um, I'm excited to get to, to get to know him better um, and to work with him. And um, he's going to have a, a few issues coming his way uh, right now for us. <laughs> um, no stranger. Uh, most Albertans know where's our moisture. Um, we didn't have much of a spring runoff, if any, in rural Alberta. Um, so most crops are up right now, um, but we run the risk of burning. Um, and actually, it's interesting that you mentioned that because I was just in a meeting this morning with my municipality and we're already talking agricultural disaster. Um, the rain is just not there. Um, we've got crops up there about up to three inches, um, but we're, it's plus 32 at my house right now. These are temperatures that we normally see mid-August, maybe for a week, not, not certainly not in June and certainly not for this extended period. So um, the other issue um, that's going to be probably uh, brought up to him too as well, it's a bit of a cross-ministry issue, um, but we're having issues with solar uh, farms, uh, and I'm not going to say farms, I got to watch my language there, uh, solar installation projects um, that are being placed on number one grades uh, growing soils in Alberta and taking large swath of agricultural land out of production. So um, I'm, I am not at all concerned uh, that he will be brought up to speed quite quickly on, on a number of issues that are, are going to be coming hard and fast his way. One of the other ministries that you will probably be dealing with as RMA is energy because uh, in later last uh, I'd say earlier this year, I sat down with three of your colleagues from Northern Alberta, three Reeves from Northern Alberta, who are dealing with the unpaid property taxes from oil and gas companies. Brian Jean is the now Minister of Energy and Mines, if I'm not mistaken, is his new title. Uh, are you hoping to have a conversation with him to continue the work that Peter Guthrie did in that file, but also Minister Schultz's Municipal Affairs? Absolutely. And and again, another MLA, another minister coming into a portfolio that I know is very uh, up to speed, very well aware of what the issues are. Um, minister Jean uh, obviously comes from the Fort McMurray um, uh, 
area in the Wood Buffalo region. So he he is he's been in my community actually probably the last year. I've I've seen more of him than probably any other minister um, out here too as well because we're quite heavy in the oil and gas industry. So I think probably I've lost count at least um, six or seven times he's been out to the community. So I again um, a really good choice for her to put into that um, that portfolio. Um, somebody that's going to be able to pick it up and and start running with it right away and 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 somebody that's got the 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 depth and the knowledge um, of what's going on in the oil and gas industry. So, just as long as we we focus on what's good for rural Albertans, not so much on um, some of those big businesses and that the big oil companies. Um, but definitely, um, I I I am fairly confident that uh, Minister Jean's going to be be very good in that role and speak up for rural Albertans. I, I want to talk about the, the the elephant in the room that RMA and Alberta municipalities will be dealing with over the next few uh, months. And that's the LGFF and the uh, MSI funding. Uh, you just talked about the big bill that you're about to get uh, because of the wildfires. Um, you're not alone. Other municipalities across Alberta are dealing this, with this as well. What are you hoping to hear from Rick McIver and the new minister of Finance and Treasury, uh, Nate Horner, I just wanted to make sure, who was the former agriculture minister. What are you hoping to hear on this file to potentially put your municipality at ease and RMA at ease to say, okay, we've been heard, they're going to do something about it? I think, you know, I, I what I would hope is it's Christmas <laughs> and Christmas is going to come early for rural Alberta. And um, I, I'm sure you've been following some of the, the interesting uh, work that's being done with LGFF. Um, obviously, it's replacing the Municipal Sustainability Initiative. It's money that municipalities, rural and urban, uh, depend on um, to, to function and to run. It's about a billion dollars short, in my opinion. Um, so where we're going to make up that, that shortfall, I'm not too sure. Um, I know Edmonton and Calgary uh, got quite a bit of the the slice of the pie there leaving the rest of, of Alberta kind of feeling like we're fighting over scraps um so it's going to be interesting it we're ready to pull our you know roll our sleeves up and get to work um but we're really hoping like I said if Christmas can come early Christmas in July would be fantastic and we get that that funding uh bumped up a bit so it's been a few really tough years especially on rural municipalities um so any cuts or incentives uh, that the oil and gas industry has been given has come back, come on the backs of the municipalities, not so much um, on the back of the royalties with the provincial coffers, but all the incentives and the cuts that um, we've seen over the last, you know, three to five years has actually come out of the pockets of, of, of municipalities. Um, so I know, for instance, Brazu County, we we depended on the, the well drilling uh, equipment tax, which was um, a cut completely for us. Um, we had actually recommended that maybe there'd be a two to three year holiday. Well, it actually got scrapped. My municipality, that some most years, that was a three to five million dollar um, uh, drop in the bucket for us when I say drop in the bucket, but that was a large slice of our infrastructure. So our road maintenance, our road building, all that capacity, it's all, it's gone. Um, and this is the first time I've been on council now for 13 years. This is the smallest capital budget that I've ever worked with. Um, and it is directly. Is it going to get harder? Absolutely. hundred percent. Um, so some of the other, uh, the other incentives has been, you know, a bit of a tax holiday for three years on new builds. Um, so that's, that's money that's not coming back into the community being invested in the community. And, you know, I, we understand that oil and gas companies were going through a rough time and, and we, we understood that because, you know, for, for many of us in these communities, you know, up to 80% of our population, um, including my own family is affected by it, that we're employed in that, in that industry. So we get it. Um, but, you know, now we're seeing companies with record profits, um, shareholder loans being paid, or shareholder uh, um, uh, uh, dividends being paid out at the highest level that we've ever seen. And that's coming on the backs of you and I. Um, so we need to kind of get back to the table and get that figured out. And it would help that LGFF discussion along too as well. So, Last question, and this is the big one, and it's kind of an overarching question, but what do you want this new cabinet to know that RMA will be pushing for in the next few months? You talked about it a little bit earlier, but I want to go into a little bit more depth. You said you're going to be coming with a, basically a grocery list of items that you want to hear, and hopefully this new cabinet will fix. What are you most 
focused on for you? Is it healthcare? Is it agriculture? Is it a, like, is it just the betterment of your municipalities? Because I listened to the speech that Danielle Smith gave, Premier Smith gave after her, the cabinet was sworn in. Municipalities were not brought up once. And I'm not sure if that's just because no one was asking about the municipal file. But to me, it was a sad state of affairs when our local governments aren't being addressed in the media. And hopefully this government does something about that. Yeah, no, it was definitely noticeable that that wasn't mentioned. And it, it, it's interesting because we're elected officials too. The interesting thing with uh, the elected officials in, in Alberta is we're one of the few provinces where um, party politics hasn't touched this level of government yet. Uh, we truly are nonpartisan. And, you know, and you and you touched on it at the end of the day, you know, healthcare is important. Agricultural is important. Oil and gas industry is important. Forestry is important. You know, the manuf manufacturing industry is huge for us. So at the end of the day, as as RMA, it's going to be the betterment of Alberta, of all of Alberta, of rural Alberta, and to making sure that those um, concerns and the solutions to those concerns are put on the table and 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 some thoughts been put into it when we um, come out the other end. So it's we're excited. It's going to be an exciting four years. Um, the mandate's been given, and uh, we're just excited to sit down at the table and. What we keep talking about is a partnership too, as well. Um, and like we remind, you know, Albertans were elected to as well. And, you know, we're the government closest to the people. I live in a community of, you know, 7,000, um, roughly uh, the one urban center uh, services about 15,000 people. I'm at the grocery store pretty much every day. Um, and I'm hearing those concerns firsthand, literally pushing a grocery cart down, down an aisle. Um, and uh, it's making sure that those concerns and those solutions are are brought up to the table. And when those decisions are made in downtown Edmonton, um, that that rural lens is is placed on them and that they're really thinking about what's good for all of Alberta. Are you hoping engagement is better in this new cabinet? Because I know, Paul, and I know I said that was my last question, but this I need to get <laughs> this question in because... Paul, in our last interview, Paul McLaughlin, the president of RMA, said uh, he hopes that the next government, because it was in the middle of an election, actually consults with rural municipalities and not just assumes the best for rural municipalities, but consults. Are you hoping for that as well? Absolutely. And and with that, it's meaningful consultation. So I know in the past we've 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 been at the table and, and we've been told, well, you were consulted with, but it was clear that the decision was made already prior to meeting with us um, and, and trying to steer the conversation um, uh, is, is very difficult when, you know, Paul, for instance, I mean, he's got quite a few years of experience. I, my, myself, I know I'm, like, I'm a little bit younger, but I've got, you know, over a decade of experience. We know when we're being um, uh, talk to <laughs> rather than listen to, <laughs> to put it politely. And I, and, and I, I do. I, term. <laughs> I am, I'm fairly optimistic. Um, I am excited. This is, you know, after we go through an election, I've been through four, I know on the municipal level, not the provincial level, but it is an exciting time. Everybody is kind of, you know, chomping at the bit to get to work and, and kind of excited and, and that opportunity is there. So I hope it lasts the four years. And like I said, I really hope it's meaningful consultation and engagement with us going forward. So because that has been sorely lacking in the past, you know, and 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 by both both governments, both the NDP and the UCP um, had an issue with that. So um, like I said, I'll be cautiously optimistic. I want to thank Kara so much for joining us for the special episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Now, we will be carrying a special episode on Monday when we'll be sitting down with Kathy Heron, president of the Alberta Municipalities, but I want to thank you. I want to thank you for tuning in and for being part of this great conversation. Now, as I say before, if you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and specials. We have some amazing guests lined up. You won't want to miss it. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for behind the scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally, as much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real life in-person conversations, even if it's just for five minutes. So thank you again for tuning in for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Until next time, just keep talking.